Hello everyone. Today we're going to do a couple of simulations using a half wave and a full wave rectifier with Transformer. So up front we're going to start with a half wave system. So I've created a source. This is a standard North American 120 volt RMS 60 hertz source that translates to just a little bit under 170 volts peak. The transformer here is a 5 to 1 transformer, so this is going to drop from 120 RMS down to 24 volts RMS, or about 34 volts peak on the secondary. Stuck a little meter over here so we can see that. Here's our uh, single diode we're going to use for the half wave. Um, I'm putting a capacitor in here for filtering later on. Initially I've set it to a uh, minuscule value, just 47 picofarads. Effectively, it's not even there. 100 ohm load. All right, so this will draw some current through here. And then, of course, we have a, a meter on the load so we can see what that looks like. So to recap, what should happen here is when the output is positive, positive half of the sine wave, this diode should turn on. Current will flow through the load and produce the positive half of the sine wave. On the negative half, this diode will be reverse biased, it'll open up, there'll be no current flow, and we'll get nothing out. So we should just see positive half of the sine wave, zero, positive half of the sine wave, zero, so on and so forth. So let's do a little transient analysis and see what we come up with. All right, so I'm going to uh, run from zero to 50 milliseconds. This will show us a couple of cycles of the waveform. And along with our two meters, I'm also going to select the excitation so we can see the source. And here's our output. I'm going to change color here just uh, to make this a little easier to see. Okay, and drop in our legend. All right, so the bright blue here is the source. So as I said, this should be um, about 170 volts peak. There's 150, 60, 70, so we're right on there. And then our secondary voltage is the maroon, and we can see how much that's been reduced in amplitude. I'm going to bring this over here a little bit. And then the load is the green, which we can see is just the positive. It's sort of uh, tracing over at the same time. And zero here in the negative region. Now, just to show, there should be about, you know, well, one diode drop, you know, seven tenths or so of a volt lost here. So if we grab our cursors and find the actual peak for the secondary voltage and just sort of wander around here, and you can see we're getting about, right, 33.8 volts. So as I said, um, this would be just a smidge less than 170 peak, or just a smidge less than 34 volts peak out here after we do the 5 to 1 on the transformer. So that looks perfect. Now we'll grab the second cursor, and we'll find the peak. And okay, so we're just, we're basically at 33 volts here, all right? So that difference is the drop across the diode, right? Looks really good. Okay, now let's see what the effect of throwing some capacitance is. So I'm going to change this from 47 picofarads to 47 microfarads. That's not a very big filter capacitor given the size of this resistor, but we should see some of the um, filtering going on here. Okay, I'm going to get rid of the excitation since we know what that already looks like. And here we go. Just so there's no question. All right, so the uh, secondary voltage is the maroon. That's the 34 volts that we were expecting. And here on the green, that's the load. You can see that little uh, deviation that we saw on the diode before a little bit better now. But there is the uh, sort of attempt, initial attempt at filling that gap, right, using the capacitor. All right, let's use something a little bit more 
effective, right? I'll increase this by a factor of 10, 470 microfarads. So a bigger cap, longer time constant, this should stretch out, fill this gap much better. And we'll keep the same settings. And there you go, right? We can see how that's um, improving considerably. And if we had an even bigger capacitor, of course, this would just be better and better and better and better and better. Okay, great. Now, let's take a look at the full wave version of this. Remember, the full wave, instead of just giving us the positive half wave, is going to flip the negative half wave. So the filtering action should be more effective. I mean, we have a fair amount of ripple here. You know, there's a, a few volts worth of peak-to-peak -peak ripple on this. Okay. Okay, so here's our full wave. And um, similar setup, same source. Still have a uh, 5 to 1 transformer out here. And here we have the selection of the four diodes. So again, on a positive input, right, we expect current to kind of come out here. At this node, it's going to go through this diode, D2. D3 will be reverse biased. Through the load, plus to minus top to bottom. Come back and then down through D4. Right? D1 is reverse biased. Remember, this potential is higher than this potential. So that returns back. So there's two diodes that we're going to have drops on, right? One here, one here. So about a volt and a half lost. Then when we switch on the negative, the positive terminal will be down here. We come in like this through D3. And again, plus to minus top to bottom. And then we'll return back through D1 to the negative side of the transformer. And again, two diodes worth of drop, so about a volt and a half. So let's take a look at the uh, transient on this. And again, I have the small capacitor in here, so we can just see the, the uh, effect of, of the rectification by itself. All right. Put our legend in here. And uh, maybe we'll change colors again. Okay, so again, here's our uh, source voltage. We see a similar kind of thing down here, right? Five to one, so there's a, you know, around 35 volts. You can actually see already there's a slightly larger gap in here, but more importantly, we can see what's happening, right? The green is the load voltage, and we can see how that is you know, flipped on the negative half wave. So we get a nice, uh, basically double frequency here. There's no, there's no dead spot. Okay, and we can check that we're getting two diodes on here. So I'm going to take the B, which is our input, find, you know, search around, find the peak. So we're getting around 33.9 there. around 32.2 so you know that's about eh, 1.7 volts or so um, and there's your two diode drops okay now let's do the same thing we'll add in some larger capacitance values here so this I'm going to do the same um, same set we used last time we'll use a 47 mic And we'll repeat our analysis. I'm going to get rid of the excitation again. And there you go. All right, so we had that. The other halfway was in here. You can kind of see a little bit of a ghostly trace of it. Um, we can see the two diode differential here on the peaks. So this is looking better than what we had in the halfway. Remember, that was just come, coming down like this and hitting somewhere down around here. All right, so we're getting a much nicer result. And if we come back and increase this further, go back up to the 470 mic, repeat the analysis. All right, so we can look at this green. We see, yes, this is uh, much more uh, smooth. Now, we still have ripple, but it's considerably smaller than it was under the half wave rectifier. So a little bit more complicated of a circuit. All right, we have four diodes here. 
Um, however, it is a much more effective circuit. And again, if we increase the capacitance a little bit more, um, we could reduce this further. And to really get rid of this, we'll turn around and on the output add uh, some manner of uh, regulation circuit in here, you know, perhaps a Zener or maybe something a little bit fancier, a Zener follower using a transistor or a, uh, an op amp or a linear regulator, something like that. We can get a very nice constant DC output, but this is where we're going to start. Right? Scale that AC input, get some isolation with the transformer as well, rectify it, filter it, off we go. Beauty.